DreamHack Duos is a three round tournament with many obstacles in the way. From going to opens to semifinals, all the way up to the money prizes and finals can be a stressful task. But by the time you watch this video, you'll have a set path in front of you. My name is Cody and today I will guide you through the depths of DreamHack Duos. By the way, our question of the day is, what has been your favorite DreamHack format so far? Solos or duos? Let us know, we would love to hear from you. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. To make qualifying through the rounds a breeze, first you need to understand the points and qualification format. The point system is a very placement dependent format, but also heavily rewards high kill games. Each elimination is five points, and you start getting placement points from top 25 all the way to the victory royale. Consistency is key, but getting a lot of eliminations in your W key lobbies is crucial to staying ahead of the competition. For a visual representation of the point system, take a look at this. Ooh, ah, it looks so nice. To participate in the DreamHack Open Tournament, you must sign up using the Google Form and given link every month before the tournament. You can find this on the DreamHack Fortnite social media and on the Fortnite competitive page. To qualify for the $250,000 prize pool, you must go through the previous stages. In the open phase of DreamHack, there are two heats. Each heat is three hours, 10 matches, and has an hour break to play the next heat. Heat one and heat two are always on the same day and are the gates to qualifying. Each heat, the top 250 duos qualify for semifinals. This may seem like a hard task for some duos, but stay tuned for some strategies that will make this qualification process a breeze. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The top 500 duos that qualify from Heat 1 and Heat 2 play the next day in a do or die type of mentality. However, you shouldn't feel stressed about semifinals as you have already achieved something and are only a couple games away from finals. Semifinals also consist of a 3 hour and 10 match format. The games consist of higher skill players which leads to a stacked end game due to the qualification on the line. To qualify for finals, you must place in the top 50 out of all 500 duos after playing your games within the three hour time limit. Placing top 10% seems very easy, and it's not that hard of a task if you and your duo work together. In the finals of DreamHack duos, qualifying is a huge achievement and sometimes leads to overconfidence. Stay ahead of others and do not change up your play style. I repeat, don't change it. The finals consist of six games and a four hour format. Each game is a custom matchmaking, and each game, the same duos will be in your lobby. In the NAE and EU region, qualifying for finals means a guaranteed cash prize, so congrats! But making money in the finals of NAW DreamHack is a tricky thing to do, especially if you are playing from a different region. Only top 35 duos get a cash prize, instead of the normal top 50, so stay on top of your game. If you would like a quick and easy representation of the qualification format, check this out. Wow, another good graph. How do the people at Pro Guides do it, man? Wow. Now, right before we get into it, make sure to check out Clix's new master course right now on ProGuides.com. We also have pro coaches tailored to help you improve quickly. Click the link below or top right to get started today. Do it, bro. Do it. Playing with a reliable and skilled duo partner is a huge key to success. Always start looking for a teammate at least a week before the tournament and make sure they match your level. Good ways of finding teammates is through Discord and other social media. All you have to do is make a post, say your achievements, statistics, and characteristics about yourself. After this, you can easily find a teammate that you know is up to your level, whether you look in terms of power rankings or earnings. Some good Discord servers to look for teammates are Open Scrims or Atlantis Scrims. Those are the two most popular Open Scrim servers and will get you the perfect teammate in no time. After you find someone that seems like a good match, play a few games here and there. Practice in scrimmages, arena, and even creative two vs twos. If you think your teammate is perfect for you, stick with them and build chemistry. What a lot of players fail to do is sticking with the same teammate. And after one bad tournament, you should never split up. Keeping the same momentum that you had before the tourney is important, especially in consistency based formats like FNCS heats. We have some amazing strategies that will help you understand how to qualify and how to play during the DreamHack tournament. As you now know, there are two heats in the open phase of DreamHack. What a lot of people don't realize is if you fail to qualify in the first heat, don't get demotivated. Instead, use that as motivation and take it to heat two. 
In Heat 2, the amount of points needed to qualify for semifinals are always less, and the players you will fight are also worse. Just remember, never quit after playing one Heat. Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team, dude. Think about that. If he didn't keep going, we wouldn't have had Space Jam, dude. And I freaking love Space Jam. Thank you, Michael Jordan. The first strategy to qualify is obviously playing for only placement points. This allows you to stay consistent with your points and still get you a couple kills during the end game. Playing placement is the most viable strategy and is the way most teams qualify. However, you cannot waste more than two games and you must have enough time to get in at least five to six end games. This takes a lot of practice, so make sure you learn those uncontested drop spots and build that synergy between the teammates. But once that is achieved, you can easily take the strategy all the way to finals. You can do it, brother! I believe in you. If you are willing to take a risk, the late start strategy is for you. When you late start, you allow yourself to be placed in a lobby with players who are still in a low point range. When late starting, you have less time to play out your games and can play hyper aggressive and get as many kills as you can. Every single month, around 20 to 50 late starting duos qualify with ease, just because they got two high kill games and one good placement game. Another advantage is that you do not have to worry about dying, as you can waste as many games as you want due to the less time. We recommend starting 60 to 90 minutes late so you have the perfect amount of games to play out. When playing for placement, don't be afraid of getting kills. If you see a perfect opportunity to frag out, seize it, flip that switch, but also be versatile and play conservatively. Never waste your games and always have better positioning than your opponent. That dude thinks he's getting high ground on you, boom, flip it and get high ground on him. And then laugh in your tower of success. <laughs> <laughs> Surviving off spawn is very crucial in successfully qualifying. Whether you are playing placement or late starting, you cannot waste time, especially when you late start. In season five, drop spots are iffy and there are no mythic POIs anymore, like Starks Industries and Doom's Domain. However, one thing that separates some locations is the amount of fishing spots. Fishing has received a huge buff in the past two seasons and gives you the opportunity of finding purple and gold weapons, rip fish, and tons of healables. For example, a spot like Craggy Cliffs, Stealthy Stronghold, or Coral Castle would be a great spot due to the amount of loot you would receive and the low amount of player congestion. Another huge factor to remember is the population of the POI slash location. If you are always contested by more than two teams, you should rethink your drop spot. In the easier lobbies, you might succeed, but as you climb your way up, it is very easy to lose off your spawn fight. So practice that landing and getting the end game will be a piece of cake. For more information on the best landing spots for any game mode, check out our previous video. Or just guess, dude, take a guess. Sometimes guessing helps. No! I'm kidding! Do your homework, kids. But I don't want to do my homework! <gasps> do your homework! Or you get no lemons! <laughs> Fine, I'll do the homework. Whatever, Mom. <sighs> okay. I know a lot of you guys love to VOD review, so why not narrow it down for you? The best of the best always knows what to do and keep a good mindset throughout the tournament. Professional players are confident in their skills and never give up. Every single month, DreamHack duos barely qualify, and a kill or two is the difference between their qualification. Trying to replicate them and matching it with your own playstyle is an even better way of improving yourself, and remember, practice is key. Practicing like the pros is the best thing you can do, and Pro Guides is here to guide you through it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, who's got ya? We got ya. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Mom, I really need these lemons. So to recap this video, we want you guys to remember every tip we told you and stick to a strategy that suits you best. Practice hard and build chemistry with your duo, whether it is playing arena games or playing some custom scrims. If you need help working on your own skills and increasing your overall game sense, check out our live coaching on our website, proguides.com. Speaking of which, you can also check out the rest of our channel for some more tips and tricks. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like the video and you can always subscribe with the bell turned on for more. Until next time though, good luck out there and I'll catch you on the next one. Boom! See you soon.